of the night and your weather-wise forecast. Neighborhood safety concerns where Charlotte parents want more speed humps. Plus the impact of a new election schedule for North Carolina's 9th District race. WCCB News at 10 in 3, 2, 1. Our top story at 10, plunging temperatures across the WCCB Charlotte viewing area. It will be below freezing when you wake up in the morning and it will feel even colder. And there is a chance that some neighborhoods could see snow flurries overnight. Well, meteorologist Brian Basham is in for Greg tonight, so winter still holding on. Yeah, you know, we typically get this March last uh, hurrah here of this cold weather, and that's certainly going to be the case for us, not only tonight, but over the next couple of days as well. Let's first talk about those temperatures right now, already very cold across the area. Let's take a look at your maps uh, as we speak. We've got uh, temperatures, at least the feels like temperature, right here in Charlotte, about 33. But I really want you to look at the mountains. It has been like this, guys, for you most of the day. We've had a lot of wind up there. Right now, we're getting uh, some wind chills in the 11, 12 degree range here. Let's try it for you as you get up and get moving tomorrow morning. Yeah, it's not going to be any better. As a matter of fact, we're looking at single digits through the mountains. Charlotte, about 27. And then how about that chance for some snow flurries as we get up and get moving? Well, here's the deal. It looks like this is going to move in probably between 3 and 5 o'clock in the morning. Right now, it looks like most of it's going to be just to the south of the area. We'll track this for you again just a little bit more coming up here in a minute. And we'll show you how cold it gets here in another couple days. Tonight, volunteers from the Billy Graham Rapid Response Team are in Lee County, Alabama to help after catastrophic tornadoes. The strongest one had winds up to 170 miles per hour. Dozens of people are dead, including three kids. WCCB Charlotte's Jeff Sanders has new information tonight from Lee County. Good evening from the small East Alabama community of Beauregard, site of an EF4 tornado that touched down yesterday with winds of 170 miles per hour. In its wake, a path of death and destruction. The death count now stands at 23, but it could rise in the coming days, according to local authorities. Earlier, we got a chance to get in and see some of that damage up close. What we saw, heartbreaking. Homes ripped from their foundations, completely destroyed. What was once a thriving local community no longer exists. The search and rescue efforts continue tonight, and they will continue for the coming days. Authorities hope they don't find any more dead bodies, but that could change. There are several injured, but more than anything, it's a heartbroken community, burying their loved ones and trying to move forward and deciding what's next. The local coroner says they're beginning to turn those bodies back over to family members in the coming days, and funeral arrangements will be made. And then the recovery process will continue. This won't be something that lasts for a couple of days or a few weeks or even a few months. This will take a long time for this community to recover. But according to the local sheriff and people we've spoken to today, it's something that they know they will accomplish no matter how hard it is. That is the latest here from Beauregard in East Alabama. I'm Jeff Sanders, WCCB News. There is a statewide tornado drill here in North Carolina at 9.30 Wednesday morning. The National Weather Service will send a test alarm through the state emergency alert system. Tonight, the race for North Carolina's 9th District is on. The State Board of Elections set a new election schedule today. Candidates can file next week. The primary is May 14th, and the general election is September 10th. If there's a runoff, then the general election could happen as late as November 5th. Candidates and election officials are preparing for an all-out sprint. We're bound and determined to make sure we get everything out there, everybody out there, have it working just as we, we would in any other election. Mecklenburg County Elections Director Michael Dickerson says there is added stress with another go at the 9th District election. Fortunately, it's only 50 precincts, uh, so it's, it's not a full-blown citywide, countywide, 200 precincts going out there. He says this election will cost the county between $150,000 and $250,000 and that there will be extra scrutiny on securing the results. Out of an abundance of caution, we're going to make sure everything is exactly right before we go further. State elections officials will be on the ground in Bladen and Robeson County. Sure that training Basically, all aspects of election preparation are being done on Meanwhile, candidates are mounting their strategy and preparing to campaign. It is all about 
an individual candidate getting their voters to the polls aggressively. Union County GOP Chair Dan Barry says with only weeks to campaign before the primary, he expects Republican candidates to pinpoint voters. You're looking for those hard right, vote every time, uh, consistent voters, so it brings it down to a very finite pool. Barry says it could be a challenge getting voters to the polls. There are a lot of people out there that I think are just sick and tired of it and just want this to go away. The winner likely to face Democrat Dan McCready in the general election. According to campaign finance documents, he ended the year with about a half a million dollars. Barry says fundraising for the next round will be key. Money, money, and money. If you don't have the money, you can't get your message out. State agents arrested McCray Dowless last week. He's the political operative at the center of that investigation. And we learned today that Caitlin Kroom, a second person named in the state's indictment, has also been arrested. Three other people are facing charges. Developing tonight, the House Judiciary Committee has launched a sweeping investigation into President Donald Trump's campaign, businesses, transition, and administration. The committee formally requested documents from 81 people and entities with ties to the president. That includes Donald Trump Jr. and the CFO of the Trump Organization, Alan Weisselberg. The committee is looking at possible obstruction of justice, hush money payments to women, collusion with Russia, and using the office for personal gain. The president has denied any wrongdoing and says he will cooperate. Experts say the investigation could lay the groundwork for Democrats if they choose to pursue impeachment proceedings. Big traffic headaches tonight and again tomorrow night for drivers in East Charlotte. Part of the East Independence Boulevard is closing any moment heading toward uptown. WCCB Charlotte's Marvin Beach is live in East Charlotte with more on what's causing this closure. Marvin. Drew, this is part of the project to replace the Hawthorne Street Bridge. Now, crews tonight and tomorrow night will be closing Independence Boulevard so they can remove a huge crane out here. You can see the crews there right now. Now, westbound lanes of Independence will close between Briar Creek Road and Charlottetown Avenue. Now, this lasts until 5 tomorrow morning. Then the road will close again tomorrow night starting at 8. Now, crews are replacing the Hawthorne Street Bridge as part of the second phase of the streetcar project. Work on this started in July 2017 and was supposed to be finished this month, but the work has stopped because the new steel girders don't fit. Neighbors along Hawthorne Lane are angry and frustrated. It's really hard to get around this neighborhood without that bridge, so we have to rely on Central Avenue, which is very congested. With the bridge, there's all kinds of ways of getting around that traffic, so the traffic is pretty congested. All right, and taking a live look now at crews that are getting ready to close inbound Independence Boulevard until 5 a.m. So there is a possibility that this could affect your commute tomorrow morning. Now, some alternate routes are Central Avenue and Monroe Road. Drew? Thanks for that information tonight. Marvin Beach reporting live in East Charlotte. Thanks again, Marvin. A 16-year-old is locked up tonight, charged with a double murder in Rock Hill. Police arrested Sam Robinson Friday in Charlotte. He is charged as an adult. Investigators say they believe Robinson targeted Zinquarius McQuarrie and Malik McCullough. The men were found shot inside a car that wrecked last Tuesday at the intersection of Chestnut Street and South Jones Avenue. The defense can begin calling witnesses tomorrow in the trial for the man accused of killing a protester in 2016. Prosecutors finished presenting their case against Raekwon Borum today. WCCB Charlotte's Courtney Francisco was in the courtroom. Raekwon Borum did not move, hand on his chin, as jurors heard blunt phone calls prosecutors say he made from jail. I already been told. Prosecutors argue Borum went to the protest in Uptown after the 2016 police shooting of Keith Scott to kill police and that Justin Carr walked into the line of fire. Jurors finished watching Borum's lengthy confession tape today in which detectives tell Borum they think he fired a shot to disperse the crowd. We figured an accident would be something that's, like I said, softer, something that he would be able to talk about. Borum eventually admits to that. The defense tried to raise reasonable doubt, pointing out police fed Borum the story. Is it possible that after you told him that he killed someone, you told him that he had a gun, that he lied to you as well? 
Jurors heard three phone calls in which Borum says police have evidence of him shooting. And the prosecution's last witness, the medical examiner, backed up the argument that a bullet killed Carr, not shrapnel in the chaos. When I spoke with the defense about this possibility of a grenade, we're talking military-style grenades, fragmentation grenades, not not of uh, less than lethal munitions that would be used in a riot type situation. The prosecution ended up calling a total of 18 witnesses. Now that the defense has taken over, it's not clear how much longer the trial will take because we don't know how many witnesses they will call or if they'll call any at all. In Uptown, Courtney Francisco, WCCB News. Major breaking health news tonight. A man in London may be the second person ever to be cured of HIV thanks to a stem cell transplant. Doctors say the man had the transplant in 2016 and now there is no trace of the virus 18 months later. The first person to be cured of HIV is known as the Berlin patient. He's an American who had the transplant 12 years ago. These cases are giving hope for new treatment options. Luke Perry of 90210 and Riverdale fame has died at the age of 52. A publicist for the actor says Perry died today, just days after a massive stroke. Family and friends were at his side. Sources say the Riverdale set shut down production today. Perry played Archie's dad. There is no word how the show will handle his death. Tonight, a Charlotte pastor wants to see the United Methodist Church stay together. There has been talk of a possible split since national church leaders voted last week to reinforce their stance against ordaining gay clergy and performing same-sex marriages. Dr. James Howell, a senior pastor at Myers Park United Methodist, attended the conference where that vote happened. He says a lot of people are disappointed. It's hurtful to people of faith to be told by other Christians that you, we don't really want you in the church. You, you, you're, you're, you're bad. You, you're insufficient. You're evil. Howell says that he wants a big tent church that welcomes all. A woman facing a new charge after a teenager dies from alcohol poisoning. Plus, neighborhood safety concerns in Dilworth, why some parents say they're scared to let their kids play in the front yard. 